and welcome. Early. Thank you for these discussions uh, that you give different perspectives of the Swedish government to support democracy in Nigeria, but especially as a uh, thank you for the cooperation with Yaga. So good afternoon and welcome. My name is Nabil Osman and if you're joining me right now today, I will be moderating the second uh, e-talk series. That's the Democracy e-talk series brought to you by the partnership of Yaga and the Embassy of Sweden here in Nigeria. Today, we're looking at the subject of increased engagement of young people in Nigerian democracy. I'd like to cede the floor to the ambassador of Sweden to Nigeria, that's Ambassador Carl Michael Grant. So, Ambassador. Hello, everybody. My name is Mika Elgrens. I am the Swedish ambassador to Nigeria and to Ghana and Cameroon. We have a regional uh, embassy, Swedish Embassy in Abuja. I'm very glad to open the second round of three uh, e talks on democracy. Um, as I mentioned last week, these democracy talks are part of the efforts of the Swedish government uh, to support democracy around the world. Uh, and we call it drive for democracy, that we should push democracy ahead of us. Um, and in many countries, as you know, there's a growing concern about threats and challenges. And we see how democratic institutions are being weakened and the democratic space as we call it, uh, not for the civil society, uh, shrinking and gets smaller in many countries. And we think that today, um, democracy and principles need to be actively protected and promoted. And this is a kind of promotion for democracy actually, together with Nigerian. As part of Sweden's drive for democracy, Swedish missions, missions abroad, like this embassy in Oja, uh, we arrange these e-talks, uh, virtual talks uh, around the world, uh, and that is to prepare for the planned event Stockholm Democracy Talks in Stockholm, the capital of Sweden, next year, 2021, hopefully. Uh, and the Ministry for Foreign Affairs, which I represent in Nigeria, has identified 10 priorities, uh, prior, priority areas for this drive for democracy. And one of them, number 10 actually, is promote young persons' democratic engagement. And this is the topic of today. Uh, how can young people in Nigeria get more involved uh, in the democratic development of this, of their country? Uh, as you all know, Nigeria has a very young population, much younger than in Sweden, uh, with nearly half of Nigeria's population being between the ages of 18 and 35 years. Uh, young people represent one of Nigeria's most promising assets, I would say. And the energy and innovation that Nigerian youths have brought to other sectors could also shape democracy and development in the country. Let me give you one example. In May 2018, the world, including Sweden, applauded strong efforts of Nigerian youths after the, that President Mohamed Buhari signed the Age Reduction Bill, popularly known as Not Too Young to Run. Uh, and this made it possible for young Nigerians, um, some of you would speak later on, uh, to become more in actively engaged in the countries. Uh, democratic space. In Nigeria today, the age for elective positions, as far as I know, in the House of Representatives has been reduced from 30 years to 25 years, for Senate government, uh, governorship from 35 years to 30 years, and in the office of the President from 40 to 30 years. So these institutions have been definitely been rejuvenated. It's not a surprise that the Not Too Young to Run campaign led by Yaga, by the way, quickly became one of uh, a global uh, relevant, shaped Nigeria's general elections last year, 2019. 
Uh, and of course, such a landmark achievement uh, does not happen of a day, uh, like for every other constitutional amendment success. It was a long process. But more needs to be done, and that is why we're all gathered virtually here today uh, to discuss and exchange on ways of promoting young people's democratic engagement and to strengthen democracy in Nigeria. And after all, there is a long tradition in Nigeria. Prominent political figures in the history of Nigeria, such as Namdi Aziwe, Obafemi Olowo, and Tafawa Balewa, were all in their 20s or 30s when they played their significant, significant roles uh, in the history of Nigeria. So I look forward very much to your presentations and to the discussions coming afterwards. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Ambassador. So the Ambassador has done such a good job of laying a foundation and that pretty much takes a lot of the work off my hands. But before I introduce to you our special guests for today, I want to just quickly run through a couple of things. Now, the Not Too Young to Run legislation, which addressed a major impediment in youth participation in Nigeria's politics, uh, you know, this was a positive action towards closing the representation gap and signaled a shift towards inclusive politics. As a result of the reduction of age limits, Nigeria witnessed a new wave of competent and credible young men and women who aspired to run for office in the 2019 elections. Now, of course, the ambassador said that he talked about the reduction in age for the House of Representatives, the State House Assemblies, uh, the Senate presidency, all of that being very, very significant. Over the years, young people have developed capacity and competence for political participation and public leadership as they have become visible in elective and appointive public positions in Nigeria. This isn't something that I need to say or stress anymore. I mean, uh, every average Nigerian on the streets knows how much young people have contributed to Nigeria's democracy through the political system in the country. Now, according to INEX voter registry for 2019, youths consisted of 51.11% of registered voters and overall youth candidacy took a huge leap from a total of 21% in, in 2015 to 34.2% as of 2019. Now data according to IAGA indicates that young people below the age of 35 occupy 103 seats out of 1,558 elective seats in Nigeria. While adequate, while adequate youth representation in Nigeria's democracy is not yet achieved, young people celebrate that inclusive democracy that has found its roots and recognize the positive value that the largest block of the nation's population can bring. Now, this is really just, it's a foundation for our conversation today. And I have been talking about the guests that we have at hand to discuss this particular topic with us. So without further ado, I'm going to make introductions. Now, I have with me a Nigerian politician and legislator who is currently representing the Zuru Fakai Danko Wasagu Sekaba federal constituency of Kebi State at the Federal House of Representatives in the Nigerian National Assembly. He hails from Zuru, which is in Kebi State, and he is currently the chair of the Young Parliamentarians Forum, YPF, in the 9th National Assembly. I'm talking of none other than Honorable Kabir Tukura Ibrahim. So I have him on standby, but I also have with me Bella Ann Ndubisi, who has seven years of experience in cultural and public di diplomacy. She currently works as the cultural affairs specialist at the Embassy of the United States of America, that's here in Abuja. Now, very interestingly, she holds an MA in International Development Studies and a BA in International Relations and French. She has strong interests in women and girls empowerment and democratic governance and works in an advisory capacity with CSOs in Nigeria, working on these particular issues. Now, what you might not know about Bella is that she is a founding member of the Not Too Young to Run movement. She has more than a decade's experience working with adolescents, particularly in building their leadership capacity and navigating a career path. 
through her initiative, Girl Lead Hub, Bella is building a, and supporting a network of adolescent girls who are driven and committed to leadership, service, and making positive change. In five years of being a member of the Abuja Hub, she has served as a hub curator, hub recruitment chair, hub elections committee chair, and led several hub projects, including Shape Up Mentoring, Give a Gift, Amanda Initiative, and much more. She joined the alumni com community in 2018 and was recently appointed co-chair of the Global Shapers Advisory Council on Elections and Leadership. Now, you've probably heard of a few of these initiatives that Bella has uh, been a, uh, an important part of. Uh, without further ado, I'm excited to introduce both of our guests. So hello, Bella. Hello, Honorable Tukura. Welcome to our e-talk on democracy. I want to throw the very first question to Honorable Tukura. Uh, as far as Nigerian youths are concerned, I mean, this is a very interesting time where democracy is concerned and the youths are concerned. And you, Honorable Tukura, are pretty much an embodiment of what Nigerian youths are looking forward to. So my question to you is this. As we said, in 2019, Nigeria did witness an increase in the number of young people who participated, who contested for a position in office. Now, while the number reduced after the elections, we still saw a reasonable number of young people contest and win the elections. One of, as one of the young people who won elections, what were some of the challenges that you experienced contesting as a young Nigerian? And are there opportunities that can be leveraged to increase youth political inclusion in Nigeria? Thank you very much, Nabila. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to thank you for having me on this platform, and I'm really happy to be here. Um, the first and the greatest challenge every young man faces in Nigeria when contesting for election is the fact that he's a young man. Uh, the space is not conducive for young men, and when I speak for young men, I'd like to include uh, the women and the people living with disabilities as well, because I, I like to lend a voice for these three categories of people because they are the most underserved in, in our country. Now, this, these people are, are considered not fit for public office because they are young, either because they are young or because they are women or because they have disabilities. Um, I know when I started contesting running for the House of Reps, I know how I, in my constituency back and forth, they would say, you know, he's too young. What can he achieve? What can he do? He can't influence anything. And of course, he doesn't even have money. Money plays a key role, which is actually another challenge for young people and women. Uh, finance is very important in elections in Nigeria. Over time, elections have become very expensive and uh, you have to have um, a good sponsor or you do a good homework, either of the two. The, the implication of having a sponsor means you have a godfather who would um, tell you guide what you do eventually when you win elections. So it's almost as good as useless having to win election with a with sponsor. Unless you're lucky, your sponsor is a free-minded person who would allow you to do what you want to do on your own opinion, on your own volition. So um, these are the two most important challenges that young people face. Uh, uh, some of the things that can be done to to check this is uh, first of all at the political party level there's need for strengthening of internal democracy once internal democracy is strengthened and the politically political party level every person be it a young person a woman or a person living with disability can come up and contest for public office without much of the challenges that we actually face um in, in my constituency or generally across the country you find that almost every constituency you see that there are a few people who hold the delegates. These delegates are the ones who, who run the primary elections. And these people hold the delegates and then the, the delegates do their bidding at the end of the day. So if you don't do your homework well and go and dobale, it's a Nigerian slang, and dobale to these kingmakers, you, you may not be able to make it. In my own case, um, I, I started quite early. I started as early as 2016 December. That was after the 2015 elections. I kept going to my constituency almost every week or every other week. And I was consulting with young people. I, I actually um, completely forgot about the political class and the elderly. I, I focused my energy on young persons. Now, this is because I've realized uh, the young persons, 
if United can shape the future of our country and have uh, with, with our population, we have what it takes to be able to direct the course, the political course. So I focus my energy on young persons uh, and the people over up there are the political class and the old people who are saying, oh no, the children's play, the child's play, let them be, let them finish. They're going to come back to us and he can't go anywhere. Um, at the end of the day, towards election, that was in 2018, um, there was a hot contest, hot contest between PDP and APC on the platform for me to run. That is because I've done my homework so well and then I have the youth on my side. Um, I've been able to show them that we can do this together and that the power lies with us, not with those guys. So uh, the contest was, where would I run? So at the end of the day, I chose the party, uh, the platform on which I run and we emerged successful. So like yeah. I said, strengthening internal democracy is a very, very key factor. And of course, um, adopting measures that would de-emphasize money politics. Money politics is one of our greatest problems. And if uh, we de-emphasize that, that would go a long way in promoting uh, youth inclusion in, in, in political space. Honorable Tukara, I'm glad that you brought up uh, the subject of godfatherism as far as well, Nigerian politics is concerned. And I do have a question that um, I want to throw to Bella on the subject of youth inclusion. But since you brought it up now, I, I want to field you this question. So very recently, it was announced, I mean, Ondo State and Edo State are both uh, preparing for gubernatorial elections at some point in the future. And of course, the parties have started to rally around and get their ducks in a row. Now, the two largest parties we know of, APC and PDP, have announced that nomination forms can be picked up at a certain amount, ranging from 1 million to about 22.5 million Naira. And that is varying between, you know, men and women, young men and young women. Now, I brought this up because, I mean, like you said, young people, the first thing that was said about you was you don't even have money. Now, young people are still coming up as far as establishing themselves e economically is concerned. So how do you think, how is it that young people have perceived you knowing full well that, you know, there is this monetary cost to just picking the nomination form, not even going through the whole process of campaigning and then, you know, finally getting to elections itself. Do you think that it has affected how young people perceive you or is that something that's not discussed altogether? Well, in, in my constituency, that has uh, it had no effect. Um, my form was about 3.5 million for other reps in the APC at the time. And it will amaze you to know that before before I said Uhuru, I had about 8 million Naira contribution for form from young people. Uh, my friends came together, contributed about 4 million, and then people from my constituency and some elderly pe older people who had started believing me then at the time contributed money another four million so i had i had access for form so that was how I, I was able to pull that through and then the the fact that they knew how all this thing came about uh, i think they don't look at me in in a bad light because i was able to apply a form uh, i think we're good with that all right perfect so bella now, with your experience working with young people and engaging with the Not Too Young to Run movement, I'm sure, I mean, the question now is, do you think that there are actually prospects now with the landmark that has been achieved or that was achieved before, you know, 2019 elections, do you think that there are more prospects for youth political inclusion? The initial demand for um, the bill was to reduce the age qualification to 18. But of course, you know, we have a politics that is not really grown, right? We're getting there. So we had to, you know, do some negotiations and get it to the point where we are now. And some of the statistics you've reeled out earlier demonstrate that even with what we have now, we were able to record some, you know, very interesting gains, right? Um, in terms of the numbers of young people who ran for um, office in the last, in the last elections. Um, on our brief to Kurais, yeah, we, we, he would also tell you that now we have for the first time, you know, young people who also are leaders of state assemblies, right? And so that that's that's important, but we still have a very long way to go. There are many prospects because now the age is not a barrier, right? So for a lot of young people who may have wanted to do this before, but who thought that age was a was a barrier, now age is not a barrier. So now they have a lot more time to plan. Um, to 
to solicit for funds, to build their sub- grassroots uh, support, and to, you know, to make a go at it. A lot of the times, one of the key things that will come up as, you know, as far as, you know, hindrances to young people in running for elective office is finance. And, you know, for anything you do, money is an issue. Even if you wanted to start a business, you know, you will still need funding, right? If you wanted to run political office, you need funding. There's really nothing you would do that does not need funding. Yes, in our Nigeria context, we're talking about exorbitant, ridiculous amount of funding, right? But you do still need some sort of funding. As we now have this bill, I think one of the things that is really important for us to begin to do as young people is to think about ways to penetrate the system, right? Um, what does that mean? That means pick up a pl- pick up a ticket, join a political party. 2023 is down the line, but any young person who's looking to run in 2023 that currently does not have any party tickets, I don't think is preparing enough, right? So this is the time that you begin to, to build. Right. This is the time that you pick up that ticket and you begin to work, because one of the things that we heard oftentimes in the course of the campaign was that young people have not paid their dues. Right. So maybe they wait till the last minute and then they pick up that ticket right before the nomination and then they try to make a dash at it. That's not, you know, there's really no job where people become really successful without learning the ropes. Right. So they say we haven't learned the ropes. Now is the time to learn the ropes. Join a political party. Um, join like different um, contribute to the party uh, political pro- process help to shape some of the internal on oh, no, talked about internal party democracy help to shape some of those policies within the parties that could potentially lead to policies that you know either promote or does not promote youth political participation or you know women's political participation so help to shape some of those volunteer contributes i mean internship is a process that anybody takes to learn the ropes right whether you're working in the ngo space or in the business space um you you get into the space you learn what you can and then you go out and do your own thing right so it's important to one pick up a ticket join a political party even understand how the process works because i can tell you there were young people who ran this time around um they, they had a really good run, but towards the end of the process, they got rigged out because they didn't understand the politics of how parties work, right? So understand how that works. Begin now to build your constituency, right? If we're going to say that we don't have enough money to maybe buy the votes, well, why don't you begin now to build a constituency of people who are actually going to believe in your politics, who would trust in you as an individual, and who trust in your capacity to deliver, right? And who will come out and mass to vote for you. Yes, a lot of politicians buy their way out, uh, we heard, but we also know from this particular, this past election that there were young people who ran on, um, on major political parties and they basically ran on the strength of their own, you know, on their, on their, of, the, of their own support, of their own, you know, standing within their community. So it's really important to also go back and make sure that you're you're building your community and you don't come to them towards the election time, right? You start to nurture that relationship now in the lead up to the election. So there's, there is a lot of prospects. Um, there, there's a lot of planning. Um, there's still a lot more to be done, but I think we're, we're really in a good place to begin to make sure that we're putting together, you know, some of those instruments to make sure that we have better outcomes for young people in the next, in the next elections. At what age do you think that's outside of elections now? What age do you think that youth actually do need to be caught to engage in democracy in Nigeria? As soon as a young person or a citizen begins to understand their role as citizens in contributing to democracy, um, as soon as they begin to become, you know, very aware of their civic obligations, that's the moment you begin to nurture them, right? I can tell you as an individual, my interest in public service started as early as the age of 10. Now, there were no systems to guide me at 10 years old to say, hey, you know, you want to go into public public service. This is what you do. We didn't have those sort of systems. Now, if I were in a country like the United States, for instance, I can guarantee you that probably would have at some point been a page at, you know, in Congress, uh, maybe volunteered with my, you know, my, my representative at one of the summers during my holiday. There are those different processes to begin to get young people interested, right? first of all citizenship early on so kids have to go through so in schools we have prefects for example i was a prefect i was a games prefect in secondary school in primary schools you have prefects 
the moment you begin to entrust a child with leadership, right? Leadership responsibilities. They know that now you have to take care of, you know, you have a responsibility, you have a burden, you have people who are looking up to you. That's the time when you start. That's the time when you start to build that awareness. You know, you, you begin to remind that child that, listen, you know, the most important role as a citizen of any country is that office of the citizen, right? Let them understand what that role entails, what they have to give and what they should expect within that role. And begin to nurture them for such a time that when, you know, they'll be able to take on political leadership. So I think as early as elementary school is when you begin to groom, you know, students. You need to do a better job of nurturing early. So it's not an excuse to say, oh, young people are not ready. No, you start to build institutions and systems that prepare them early on to become a part of that process. Thank you. Uh, okay, let me come to Honorable Tupura. Before 2019, everything was on paper. There was, we were just talking the talk and not necessarily the walk. But now we're doing that. We have young people in office. So would you say that this has made any impact whatsoever? These young legislators, have they done anything? Uh, have they made any advancement, especially for the cause of youth? I'd like to state that the Not Too Young to Run Act, been as passed by the president, has created a lot of awareness to Nigerians on the need for young people, young persons' inclusion and governance. However, uh, the job is not yet done. Um, I can tell you categorically, Claire, that the, in the House of Reps, the bill has not been able to bring any young person below the age of 30, which was the age before the act, into the House of Representatives. Uh, in other words, there's nobody between the ages of 25 and 30 that has, that has come into the House of Representatives in the 19th assembly in 2019 elections. So, uh, in other words, that is to say that um, the bill has not created a new member, if, if, uh, if that can be put that way. So, uh, like, that's why I said that there's a lot more job that needs to be done. We need to create more awareness and have uh, more people understand the need and then of course for younger people to be able to utilize this. Um, but this is not the first time we're having young people in Nigeria in leadership positions. Um, there was a speaker of the House of Representatives, Oladi Mejibangkode, who became a speaker around 36. Um, Ayin Payas Ayin became a Senate President around 39. Um, Yahya Bello is a governor at 40. Um, what, what I'm trying to say here is this, it's not just about having young people in this position. It's about having young people, in having responsible young people in these positions. Um, you asked me if this new crop of uh, speakers and the members in the House of Representatives have been able them to make a mark. Now, the young people in the House of Representatives, I'd like to start with them. We've been able to make a mark. We have the YPF. Uh, the YPF has never been as formidable as it is in the, like, uh, in the Ninth Assembly, even though it was just established in the Eighth Assembly, but it has never been this formidable. It is formidable and it is a voice to reckon with. For the first time, the leadership of both the Senate and the House of Representatives understand that there's a YPF and that they, they need to have a representation in everything that goes on within the the, 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 the National Assembly. Uh, so to some extent where there was supposed to be an IPU event, uh, in Geneva in April, the, the YPF got about three slots. You know, these these are things that are new, and this is because the YPF is being recognized as a voice. We are about a hundred plus when you put together the House of Representatives and Senate, about a hundred and two thereabouts. And then what we did in the House, we we joined uh, the Women in Parliament Committee and and come come together as one block. So whatever we are doing. Anytime we have an issue to discuss and young persons and women need to give a voice to it, we go in unison, we go with one voice. Uh, that's one sure way that we can harness uh, our strength uh, when we come together with the women in Bali. So we've been able to achieve quite quite a lot. Uh, uh, we've been working with the Yaga or the Not Too Run to Run uh, organizers, uh, which Bella is part of. I joined them in Lagos for a retreat where we discussed um, a bill that we were at the time planning to bring onto the floor of the house, which actually has passed first reading now. Well, I'm not sure if you know, but I'm glad to let you know that it has passed first reading. Um, that bill seeks to create additional seats in the House of Representatives and um, it's to create 12 more seats in the House of Representatives, four seats for young persons, four, four other seats for women, and four other seats for people living with disabilities. These seats are not going to have geographical constituencies, they're just representing these demographies. Um, like I've always said, wherever I know is a hard one to pass through, but 
we will try our best. We've lobbied the leadership of the House. We've showed them the, the importance of this, even to the legacy of the Ninth Assembly. If we, can, if we are able to achieve this, it will go down in history as uh, that the leadership of the Ninth Assembly was able to do this. And it, it, it was a lot of credit for them. They are given a voice to to uh, on the sub, uh, to on the sub demographics, which is actually very good for them. So we, we are working on this with with Yaga Africa. Also, we are also seeking to have an amendment of sections. 171 of the Constitution and Section 208. Uh, Section 171 gives the President powers to make appointments with constitution to federal character. Now we are we are making amendments to have to have it include that section include young persons, women, and people living with disabilities. They should also be considered when making appointments. Uh, Section 208 gives the same powers to state governors, and we are also amending it to include this three category of people. This has also Past uh, first reading is an amendment we are proposing to the Constitution of the Republic of Nigeria. As regards the um, speakers of the state houses of assembly, um, I follow them keenly. Uh, they are young persons and members of the YPF as well, because the YPF stretches beyond the National Assembly. It includes even the state assembly and the local government councils, all legislators. So I've, I've, I've come in close contact with these uh, speakers uh, with the help of Yaga Africa and I've seen they are doing quite wonderful in their uh, respective states. So I, I, I must say they are bringing in new energy and uh, new effort. Like, uh, for instance, the speaker of, um, of Oyo State, uh, I followed him keenly, and I think he's doing quite well, remarkably well, just as so as that of uh, Plato State. So as I, I think uh, there's an effect, and we're, uh, we're headed in the right direction. Okay, uh, thank you for that. Now, you were talking about how it's not enough to just be young, and there's this comment from Dachomo who says, who actually is agreeing with you. He said, in addition, I advise that every young man who desires to contest for an elective office should first be equipped with competence and capacity. Being young Absolutely. is not enough. Okay, so on that particular note, I want to throw this question to Bella. As you can see, a lot of people are talking about how, you know, it's not enough. The age factor, again, is not the only thing that matters. But do you think that as far as approach to uh, to democracy is concerned here in Nigeria, as far as that is concerned, do you think that these young up and coming uh, representatives, the ones who are actually in power, need to take a different approach from what the old guard, for instance, have been doing so far? I think one of the reasons why we, you know, we we push for more young people, and we, you know, we we really say it's important to have a diverse uh, population within our political leadership is is for this. You know, young people come with innovations, right? Um, Ambassador mentioned earlier today that they have been able to demonstrate these innovations in 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 um, in the tech sector, in the business sector, you know, in CSOs. Clearly, if they could have achieved these things in these sectors, right? You know, then that means they have something to offer. They have, they have something to contribute in in uh, politics as well. So our politics had, I mean, it's time for us to really move things ahead, right? And I think by the time we bring in young people, I think one of the things the movement has always advocated when we talk about young people, it's 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 on the notion that everybody understands that we're talking about people who have character right and who are competent because leadership is not something you leave for people who have you know no business being in leadership i mean you're responsible for the entire country how you're responsible for a large number of people so it, it it's important that character competence is number one right um before you even think about going for that office so we know that young people are going to bring in their innovation into these spaces. We know that already young people are bringing in their innovations in these spaces. For example, in National Assembly, we have several legislative aides within the National Assembly who are young people who work for, you know, who basically are the engine room of, of government, not just at the National Assembly, but in the, you know, at the federal, at the state level, young people are the driving engine rooms for some of the, you know, big, um, decisions and you know big innovations that you're seeing so if they can do that um, from the from the back door imagine what could happen if they actually had in their hands the tools the access and you know um, to be able to do more and scale those different things that they're doing already right so 
to answer your question, a short answer to you know to your question is that yes, young people will bring innovations, and they are already bringing innovations to to our political space. All right, so I'll throw this question to Honorable Tukura. This question is coming from Moshud on Facebook, and he he's asking, how do you meander through political party bottlenecks? How do you get around them? Um, the, the most important thing that you need to do is to make yourself relevant. This is beyond political party. Wherever you find yourself, make yourself relevant and the people will come to you. They would need you. You would, you would become a voice that will be reckoned with. Like I said earlier, um, in the course of, my, in the course of my, my campaign or my quest for office, I started as early as December 2016. And I was going to my constituency every other week. And this, all I was doing it was contacts and reaching out to young persons gaining their confidence and I became relevant. I told you, Mr. Mashoud, as uh, at the time of close to primaries, there was a rush between the two major political parties as to where which platform out contest. That is because I've been seen as identified as a relevant uh, stakeholder in, in the in the game. So make yourself relevant, be a voice to reckon with uh, let, let have a voice of your own and let it let it have meaning. Show responsibility, show that uh, you can be trusted with leadership. And these are the things that would endear you to the people and and at the end of the day, you carry, I think you carry the day. I'd like to give um, a very good example. Uh, Malazir El Rufai of Kaduna State. Um, he said something once where I was. He said, anytime he has a major task that he wants to be accomplished, he assigns it to a very young person below the age of 40. Now, that made sense to me because this category of people are very hungry for success. They are hungry to deliver. They are hungry to show that they can do it. So under the right mentorship, I, I call on our leaders generally to um, employ this uh, method of doing things. So these, these are things that uh, I, I call on leaders to try to adapt and learn to do it. You would see that the, the, from the system will work better. There will be a lot more innovations because these young minds are very creative. They are possible with ideas and they will bring these things to the fore. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chukara. Okay, so I have this other question from Lekon, and I think I want to throw this question to Bella. I'd like to know what you think about it. So Lekon is asking, how do you de-emphasize money politics in Nigeria? What specific mechanisms need to be put in place in order to do that? Our Nigerian politics, as it stands, um, there's always going to be emphasis on money. It's unfortunate right so except we make some like critical policy decisions that would de-emphasize so it would take a policy that you know basically um takes away the focus from money of so for instance if, if we're to restructure our elections in such a way that money is not uh, a focus or there's a cap on how much a, a, a politician is allowed to spend on their campaign or maybe an individual is allowed to contribute to a politician's campaign if we can do some of these sort of our policy decisions, then we're going to get to a place where money slowly becomes the focus. But again, even as you know, we're not there yet with these, I think as, as young people, we can think about part of innovation comes with. So, for instance, on Robert Tukur mentioned earlier that you know, in order for him to run, in, run for office, it wasn't just his money that you know that got him to where he is now, it was friends and family. So the same way when you're starting a business, one of the things that you know as someone who's starting out a business is that your first supporters are your friends and family. Same thing with politics, your friends and family. I think it's going to be hard to say that a young person would be successful in politics if they don't have a network of people who can contribute to ensure that they're able to get into a political you know, office. You need that network. You need, you need to build, so you, you either have the, the people or you have the money, right? If you don't have both, it would really be hard to say that, you know, you're ready to come out. The competence is great, but the world of politics works a little bit differently, right? So you need the, the network of people who can help you to generate the funding, or you need the funding, one or the other. But you can't have in either and then say that you're ready to run for political office in a space like Nigeria where money plays such 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 a critical role. So I'll, I'll probably say one of the things that Honorable Tukur mentioned is that make yourself, you know, demonstrate yourself as somebody who can bring value. Demonstrate yourself as somebody 
who people want to rally around. When you're able to build that kind of credibility, right? Even if you don't have the fund, then you probably see that people, you know, par- parties are then coming to look for you, right? They'll be willing to put bet their money on you because they know that you have what it takes to be able to um, win an election. How can we get the young elected as leaders to perform exceptionally in public service in order to reduce the stigma that comes with poor performance on young people. So I'm going to let Honorable Tukura uh, respond to that question. Thank you very much. Um, I, I'd like to tell you two classic examples. First of all, after elections, we had there was the Convergence 2.0 by Yaga Africa. That was a forum for young people in which they invited all elected uh, young persons before they were sworn in. And that forum discussed politics, the polity, the future, governance, and a lot of things. That exposed a lot of us that are fresh into the public service into to, to a lot of ideas and, and ways how to run government and how to do things. Um, after swearing in, we had our first retreat in, in, um, in at Oweri, also sponsored by Yaga Africa. We brought all members of the YPF together, discussed on topical issues. Um, we discussed on issues that are born in, na- born in national issues, such as the, the uh, electoral reform laws, uh, which are about to come to the house as well, the um, oil and the, the oil sector reform laws as well. These are major national issues that are on the corner. So that that um, this kind of capacity building by uh, CSO such as Yaga is very commendable. I'll tell you also something that. Um, the WFD, West Minister Foundation for Democracy, is doing for the YPF. Um, they've also organized retreats for us. Um, at some point, they, they sponsored some members of the YPF to London to attend the CP40 conference, uh, conference for Democracy in London. And that's also another very, very good outing where members were exposed to global practices and how things are done. We brought up issues, everybody brought, brought up issues from his own respective country and there were responses on how these things are tackled from across the globe. From every part of the world there were young people that came together to convert and they wrote exchange ideas. This uh, first comment comes from Mark Ifying and he says, for a very long time politics has been for the old. To change this we must Im- involve political party stakeholders to understand the importance of involving competent young Nigerians for political continuity and longevity. Now, Mark, I like that you mentioned that because my final uh, question has something to do with uh, the young and the old. Now, this next uh, comment is coming from Bashar, and Bashar says vote buying and money politics remain the bottlenecks for youth participation. Also have this comment that just came in from King Joseph, who says, most youth in politics don't have a mind of their own. So my advice is every youth interested in politics should build a personality of an entrepreneur so they can have a means of sustenance that keeps them to the side of truth. All right, so this question, which is the final question I'll take from our viewers, is, uh, this one's directed to Honorable Tukura. This is from Adeboye. He says, he's asking, how can we bring the YPF across the nation, especially in my state, Kwara State, and other states, so as to orient the youth? Also, how can we be registered members of YPF? As, as for bringing YPF across the nation, we are on the drive. This year, we were scheduled to um, inaugurate YPF in 10 state assemblies across the country. That is part of our calendar, work calendar for 2020. Unfortunately, uh, with the pandemic, everything is on a halt. Um, but I think it's been already, it's, it's been inaugurated in Enugu State. That was the only one we've been able to achieve. So after Enugu, we're supposed to do Lagos, then we do um, Adamawa, we do Chebi, we do Para. Para actually is part of what we're going to do then. Uh, Oyo, Zamfara, Plato, and uh, all the states we have the young speakers we're also going we're also going to inaugurate the ypf in those states uh, so that's the only way ypf will go around across the country uh, as for as for uh, being members of the ypf you can only become a member of the ypf if you are an elected legislator so you have to either be a senator a member of the house of representatives or a member of the state house of assembly or a member of the local government council uh, legislative council so that is the only uh, what that is the only thing that qualifies you 
to be a member of the YPF. And of course, even if you are a member of any of these uh, legislative houses, you have to be uh, the age of 45 and below at the time of your election. So that's it. Final questions. Bella, I have two for you. This first one, what must we do to scale the practice of democracy, especially in advancing youth engagement within democratic processes and institutions? Do you think that things need to be spelled out more for people, for young people who are interested in the democratic process? Political education is not something that we should leave until our, you know, our, young, our children become teenagers before we have that, begin to have that conversation with them, right? Political education begins as a, as a child. And they're like, you know, there are versions of it. At, at different stages in, in the child's life, um, you can introduce different topics to them. For example, I mentioned earlier active citizenship, right? You can't become an effective leader without being an effective, like an active citizen. An active citizen understands what their role is and what, how they can contribute to governance. An active citizen understands how to push for an inclusive democratic process, right? Yes, we need, to be, we need to teach that and we need to begin to teach that early. And there are different, very different ways that we can incorporate this. You know, through the prefect system, like I mentioned earlier on, uh, we have scout movements in Nigeria. We actually have scout movements. I will say mentoring, Honorable Tuku mentioned this earlier, we need more intergenerational dialogue. And even as I talk about mentoring, now we have some way to have, we have young people in, in this space, in these spaces, right? So my expectation of young people, by the time we come into 2023, what I'd like to see is that we've had the young people in these spaces who've opened up more spaces for more young women, men, and pers you know, young persons living with disabilities. Politicians on their end need to be open, right? Open the doors and young people be on the lookout for, you know, filling in those doors when, when they open up. Parties also should be intentional about, you know, using their platforms to promote inclusive democracy, right? So what are the process and policies that you have in place at the moment that is not favorable to inclusive, um, inclusive democracy? Thank you, Bella, for breaking that question uh, down the way that you did. So where is the space for the old guard and the young folk to come together and actually move forward? Because we can't sideline one or the other. Uh, there's something that's called institutional memory. It is very important. So there has to be some part of the old block with the new block coming together to fuse and, and get a give out a fine product. If, if you as a young man are coming with innovations and and uh, bustling ideas to put it into uh, nation building, those those old guys have experiences. They've tried a lot of things and sometimes they didn't work. But they are there to tell you that no, when you do this, it won't work because we've tried it before. How, that, that would guide you, that would give, uh, the, that would a guide for all of us collectively and so so it's very important to have both within the space but all, all uh, we are advocating for that we've always advocated for is more inclusion thank you very much honorable Tukura, for that response the ambassador wants to give a few parting remarks ambassador the floor is yours thank you so much nabila thank you all for these uh, revealing i would say and very frank discussions very interesting from from our side, from the Swedish Embassy, we're happy to be part of this. I mentioned uh, process in the beginning of my speech, and I think that these things take time. They have taken time in Sweden as well. That's, that's natural. And one thing that need, needs to change, I think, uh, are the, the political parties themselves. Uh, I mean, I, I meet a lot of very engaged young people in Nigeria, but they are not in the political parties. And if you compare to Sweden, we have eight political parties in the parliament and each party has its own youth organization, independent from the party. They sometimes quarrel and fight on different issues, but that is a, grow, a ground to grow in for future politicians. And I haven't seen that in Nigeria, so I think perhaps the culture of the political parties themselves need to change. Now I will cede the floor over to Cynthia Mamalu, who is the Director of Programs at Hiaga. Cynthia will be giving us the closing remarks as we draw a curtain on today's e-talk. Cynthia? Um, it's been an interesting conversation and just following the comments on Facebook, I really want to appreciate everyone who has joined this conversation today. We'll continue the conversation online on Twitter and Facebook and the hashtag is still 
um, drive for democracy and democracy talks. So the conversation still continues. But especially um, on behalf of Yaga Africa and our partner, the Embassy of Sweden, we want to especially thank our speakers today, um, Bella Ann Ndubisi, who is one of the founding members of North Young Strong Movement. She's actually a member of the Yaga Africa Board also. Um, it's really been nice listening to you and learning from your um, wealth of wisdom and experience. And especially to thank um, the Chair of the Young Parliamentarians Forum, Honorable Kadri Tsukura, he's actually been one of those outstanding young um, leaders in the National Assembly who, um, who beyond just engaging um, young people and working with partners to see how they can create impact, but is deeply concerned about promoting issues of um, inclusion and diversity. So you see him talking about the build to open up the space for more young people, for women and persons with disabilities. Those are issues he actually cares about. And we, um, is one of those um, young people we talk about as an organization working within the space. So thank you so much, um, Honorable Tukura, for being part of this webinar. And um, we're really glad to have um, both of you as panelists. Um, thank you, our moderator, Nabila. It's always a pleasure. Um, it's good to have you here. And I want to especially thank um, our partners for working with us on this. Not a Young to Run movement is a journey. We're not at a destination yet. We still have a lot we want to achieve. And our goal is to ensure that our democracy is truly representative and inclusive. And that at the end of the day, we would always look back and say that this was how we contributed to the democracy development in Nigeria. Once again, thank you everyone and I wish us a wonderful day. Let's join the conversation online. Thank you. Hello and welcome. Early. Thank you for these discussions uh, that you give different perspectives of the British government to support democracy in Nigeria, especially as a... Thank you for the cooperation.